Hey guys, Erica here from Big Cat Creative and today I'm going to show you how to create a PDF that people can actually type in. You can do this with Canva and a tool called PDF Escape. It's all free. It's actually really simple. So let's just dive right in. Okay, so I'm not going to talk too much today about the actual design of the PDF. If you want to learn more about design, we've got way more information in the blog post about this topic. But I just want to jump straight into creating that PDF really quickly and then showing you actually how to make it fillable, which I think is the main point of this video. So I would design my PDF in Canva. Canva is just this amazing free online design software. It does have a paid plan if you want to get more of the features. Again, you can learn a bit more about it in the blog post for this topic. But there's amazing templates that you can start from. So if you're not actually sure how to design a PDF and you don't have any design experience, hands down, go to canva.com, either click create a design or come to what will you design today. And I'm going to type in workbook. It's going to bring up a bunch of different templates down here. Click see all. Some of these will be for the paid plan only. But a lot of them are free, so I can see here which ones are for pro. It's got this little crown on it. I'm going to open up one that works on the free plan. So maybe this one here. And then go ahead and click customize this template. And then it just opens up this super intuitive, easy to use editor where you can edit the images, you can edit the text. Everything that you need is in this sidebar here. So you can click on uploads to upload your own images elements to add graphic elements, lines, shapes, photos. You can just click and drag photos to place them in the area they are in the workbook. It's so great. I love this platform. Canva makes DIY design so, so easy, but I'm not going to get too much into that today. So let's pretend that you've filled all of this out and you're really happy with how it looks. You've added it in all your own content. And you've got some areas here for where you want people to actually fill in their own information. Now, as amazing as Canva is, the one thing it is missing is it doesn't have an easy way to create a PDF that has these areas for people to write in. So right now in Canva, all this is is actually just a gray rectangle block. It's not actually specifically a text block that someone will be able to write in when you download this file. So the easiest way for us to actually do that for free is to download our finished PDF design. And then we're going to go into a different program and add in areas for people to type in. So enjoy designing your workbook. Let's just say this is done and I'm going to move on to the actual fillable PDF part. So we want to click share and we're going to download this file to our computer. So I'm going to click download. Then I'm going to download it as a PDF standard. This is the best format for creating a fillable PDF. And if you have any links or anything in the PDF, they'll be saved. You can choose which pages you want to download. I'm going to download the whole document and I'm going to click download. So just give it a minute and it will download directly to your computer. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come over to this website called pdfescape.com. I'll link it below the video as well. And we're going to use the free online version. Then I'm going to upload PDF to PDF Escape. So I'm going to upload this one. Click the upload and then you can just drag in your file from wherever you saved it. And it's going to upload that design that we just created in Canva. I do believe you can create original designs here in PDF Escape, but I've never really tried. It doesn't seem like the easiest software to use and Canva is just so good and free and simple. So I always go to Canva first. Okay, you can see. Here is our first page. I'm going to scroll through the pages until we get to that one that had the actual area to type in. So page seven, this is a really good example. So obviously I want people to be able to type in this area. So what I'm gonna do is come over to this sidebar, make sure we're on the right page, and I'm going to click insert now, if your screen is a little bit smaller, you might actually miss the full sidebar. It might look a little bit more like this, okay? So if that's the case, you'll just want to click the top button that looks like this. This is the insert button. And we're going to insert a form field, which is a little bit counterintuitive. Maybe you would think text, but text is actually text, like you would be typing out a design. 
what we want to do is actually enter a field so that people can write their own text. So we're going to click form field. And then here's the options we want to look at. So there's text, checkbox, radio button, drop down, list box, reset button, and submit button. So lots of great options here. I imagine what you'd be using most in a workbook style PDF is text, checkbox, maybe radio buttons, but generally just like these text areas that people can type in and check boxes so people can tick things off. Those are really good as well. I'll just show you how to use text. So click text and click select. And then it says click and drag on page to insert a new object. So I'm just going to click and drag where I want to put this text block. So obviously that's, I didn't do a great job of clicking and dragging that into the right spot, but that's okay. We can adjust it. So I'm actually going to do three. One, two, three. If you can get it as close as possible the first time, then you don't have to go back and change it. But I do definitely need to change this first one. So once you're done with adding them, you're going to go up to this top toolbar and click on the hand. And the hand is going to let you drag through and go to the next page if you wanted to. And then you can also click the edit icon, which is going to help you actually edit the page. So this is where I'm going to be able to readjust. So it can be a little bit clunky sometimes, but once you get the hang of it and where to click for things, it's actually okay. So I'm just going to adjust these. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see what I'm doing. Click on the hand so I can scroll down a bit. Click back into the edit icon. So you'll be going back between the hand and the edit icon quite a lot. The hand will help you move around and actually test the box out. It's almost like a preview. And then the edit is going to actually help you edit these. So we've got the three boxes here that we need for this page. Make sure you're on this edit mode and then come up here to this little wrench icon, which is actually the settings for the individual box that you've got selected. So click on the box you want to select, click on the wrench icon, and this is where you actually have extra settings or properties for this field. So there's two things I recommend you do here. I recommend you choose multi-line unless you want the text to just be in one single line. If you have a box as big as this, you'll want it to be multi-line. So that means people can write paragraphs basically instead of just one single line. And I'll show you the example of that. Click OK. If we go back and click on the hand icon and now we can type over multi-lines instead of just a single line and it will add a scroll bar to the box as soon as it gets too big. So there is this setting here that says visible and you can toggle this on or off. And this really is only applicable with some PDF readers. I've found that if you uncheck visible, sometimes the box that you've created still is visible depending on the PDF reader. So I know that in preview on Mac, sometimes I can still see that box. And there's not really anything you can do about it. It just depends on the PDF reader and how the PDF reader processes text boxes that are editable. So they will show up differently no matter what PDF reader you're using. So I guess just make sure that you're really happy with where the boxes are because they might show up yellow like this on some readers. They might show up white with a border. There's lots of different options. So just be aware that that does happen if you do have a fillable PDF. And it's not something that you can really avoid. Maybe if you had an advanced paid software, you can avoid this. But it's really common um, and you can just sort of work around it. And as long as you expect it, I don't think it's too bad. If you think of it from the point of view of someone who is actually filling out the PDF, you can see why it's there so they know that they can actually type in the PDF. So. It actually is a little bit handy sometimes when they are sort of highlighted like this or you can see the box there. If it really bothers you, maybe look into a paid software where you can change this. But I still don't think it's guaranteed because it really depends on the where they're viewing the PDF and how that PDF viewer actually processes this information. And now you'll have those three boxes how you want them and you can go through and do the same thing wherever else you want on your document and you can also add those different fields as well just remember to click on the edit icon click on the field and then click on the settings to adjust your settings and as soon as you know how to navigate through those things it becomes actually really easy and once you're done you can come over back to the left sidebar and you can either save it 
locally or you can go ahead and download it once you're finished and it's going to download to your computer. Okay, so I've just downloaded the file and I've opened it up first in just Google Chrome. Generally, this is automatically where my PDFs open straight away, but I don't believe you can ever actually fill in PDFs from this. This is just like a previewer. You can see that you can't see the text boxes on this, but you also can't use them. So I'm gonna open it up locally and it will open up in preview app, which is what I use to view PDFs on my Mac. And I'm gonna scroll down to the page we just did our boxes in and you can see instantly those are clearly fillable boxes and we can actually see them. So my recommendation here would be to just make sure your boxes look good. The second one looks good. I've actually made it the right size. The first and the third one are looking a little bit wonky. So I would just make sure that I make them a nice consistent size so if they are visible like this it still looks good. But that is how you create a fillable PDF. And you can see that I can type in this box with no problems. And I should be able to do multi lines of text. In my opinion, fillable PDFs are never the best way to get information from people. I think you should always try to use a Google Doc or something like that when you can. But if you're just creating like a simple freebie or a checklist for people, this is a great way to do it. If you are trying to receive important information, like onboarding information or financial information or anything that requires like quite a lot of text where people need to save it, definitely go for a Google Doc. It's so much more reliable, so much more easier to use and consistent throughout all computers. Whereas PDFs are a little bit tricky, they're a bit hard to save. Sometimes you can lose information and depending on the different readers, you know, it shows up differently or the way that people can actually fill the PDF behaves differently. So it's definitely not recommended for things that are really important. But if it's just like a freebie that you're giving out for people to use or a simple checklist or just something really basic and the information isn't super important, then I think this is a great, easy and free way to do it. Okay, guys, thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that video and learned something new. If you did, definitely check out this video because you'll probably enjoy that one too. If you haven't already, please subscribe. We put out new videos pretty much every week. So I will see you in the next one.